In this video, I'm going to be going through putting a gamma prior on a normal distribution. So when I say putting a prior on normal distribution, this, this is what I really mean. So let's say I have a random variable called y. And given this other random variable, and I do mean given, I know that this y given z is going to be normally distributed with, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to say it's going to be zero mean, okay? Um, Actually, you know what? I'll change it to the mean mu, just just so that it's slightly complicated. It doesn't really complicate that much, but but the variance. So this is the important part. The variance is going to be sigma squared on z. Okay, so that is my uh, that that is my distribution on y. Now I have a prior on z that it is a gamma distribution. So it's a gamma distribution with let's gonna let's put the parameters alpha alpha beta. Okay, so um, I'll write out what the prior, the the y given z is. Okay, so essentially what we want to get is what is the distribution over y, and to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate over z. Okay, from zero to infinity of p of y given z times probability of z, and then we're going to integrate integrated out. So basically what we're doing is we're marginalizing out. So this is called marginalizing because this 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 thing over here, these two combined is simply the joint probability of y comma z. Right? Okay, so let's let's get into the maths of it. So integration of zero to infinity. I'm, I'm going to put all the all the normalizing constants of both this thing and the prior as one on C. Okay, because I really don't want to deal with that. And you don't have to. So going over zero to infinity. And then this thing over here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that there's a multivariate multivariate so just so that we you know it's the notation like it's it's similar to the univariate case, but you know it, it's more interesting to do the multivariate case. So minus half. Um now okay, so actually let me let me show you the univariate case. So you, y minus mu squared. But this thing over here, the, the variance is going to be sigma squared and then z. So forgive me for squeezing it in, but there you go. And this is this thing have over here is going to have a prior of uh, of a gamma distribution. Now, if you don't know what the gamma distribution looks like, this um, this thing over here is what is, is the uh, distribution that we're going to use. Okay, so it goes, and again. I'm not dealing with any of the uh, any of the normalizing constants because I'm just running it out over here, set to the alpha minus one uh, times exponential of minus beta times z dz. Okay, so if you if you're wondering how does this change if it, if it was a multivariate Gaussian, all you have to do is this term over here that will simply change to going exponential of so essentially what because uh, let me start again the probability of y given z where y is a whole bunch of things from 1, one to n this is the same as saying the multiple multiplication of i equals 1 to n of p y i given z okay and this z is common for all of them because it's a multivariate Gaussian with with just one uh, one uh, variance parameter, okay. So it's all it's all distributed with mean mu and has a, a constant variance given z, okay. And they're all distributed the same. Um, so essentially, what it's, what this term, if I multiply a whole bunch of exponentials, is what it's going to look like is like this. It's going to be an exponential of minus z onto sigma squared, but summation of yi minus mu squared i equals 1 to n. Okay, so that's essentially essentially what it looks like, but it's really a, a lot neater to write this in um, in terms of linear algebra, and that's to do exponential of minus z on 2 sigma squared um, y minus mu transpose because y i y over here is y1 all the way down to y n as a vector okay and mu is simply mu repeated 
all the way down as a vector and moving all the way down. Okay, so if you do this thing, you will end up with these two equivalent terms, so y, sorry, times y i minus mu. Okay, so they're exactly the same, they're saying exactly the same thing. So let's let's deal with this, this thing, right? So, um, coming back to my integration. Now, remember, we're integrating over z. Everything else you can treat as constants. Okay, so, this, so what we're going to end up having is this. So we're going to end up uh, simplifying that down to 1 on c. And let me let me write this term first. So z to the alpha minus 1 first. So z to the alpha minus 1. And the exponentials, we can combine them, the, the, the two exponential terms. So I have uh, two exponential terms over here. So the first one over here and the second one over there. So to combine them, I'm going to take the minus z outside. And inside of that, the first term I will say, just for ease sake, I will say the first term is beta. Okay, it doesn't really matter which way you write it. And then plus this thing over here. Okay, so except I'll take this, except I will have, have the two sigma squared as well. Okay, All right, so it will end up being y minus mu t times y minus mu all on 2 sigma squared. So again, sorry for squeezing that in, but I really don't have much space. So 0 to infinity. And if you notice, uh, this thing over here is, is as far as z is concerned, that's a constant, right? So it, think of that as your new beta star. So if you look at this, this is what we call in Bayesian uh, probability. So marginalizing out, it's called the kernel. So this thing over here, well, essentially what we have is z alpha minus 1 times exponential of minus z beta star dz. OK, so this is why we're not going to end up caring about this constant over here. Because if this is a kernel, if you look at this as a kernel, and we come back to looking at the gamma distribution, you can see that it's actually quite similar to what we have over here. Okay, so I have a x, well, they're, they're talking about x in this case, but it's a z alpha to the minus 1, e to the minus beta x, right? So that, that this thing over here is essentially part, like, unnormalized, uh, and I do mean unnormalized, a gamma distribution with alpha, with, it's, sorry, not, not, not a gamma function, a gamma distribution, so I should say ga, so it's a gamma distribution with alpha beta. So, but it's unnormalized. So to normalize this, and these are, these are the only normalizing constants that we're going to actually care about. So uh, coming back to this thing, to normalize it, we will have to go beta to the alpha divided by gamma to the alpha. 1 on C, this is going to be, we will have to have introduce a beta to the alpha or beta star to the alpha divided by gamma to the alpha to be able to integrate it out inside here. DZ, but because we, we introduced this part, we had to get rid of it by saying, by dividing by what we introduced, so gamma to the alpha. Okay, so inside here, inside the integration, this part will simply integrate out to one. Okay, because it's a normalized gamma distribution as soon as we do this. And all we're left with is this part. Now, alpha, alpha was always a constant, okay? But beta star was not. So again, I'm not going to care about this C or the gamma to the alpha because they're essentially a constant. But this beta star, on the other hand, I will care about because the beta star is this thing, this, this, this term over here. So I will end up with... Uh, so this is the same as saying some sort of constant, so con a new constant times um, beta star to the minus alpha, which, which again, the beta star rewriting that will end up being my old beta plus y minus mu t transpose, so y minus mu divided by 2 sigma squared to the minus alpha. Okay, so remember how we talked about kernels? So essentially this, so now if you look at the y's, we have integrated out all the z's, and we have this new constant term, 
okay so this new constant term is if you want you can find it but you really don't have to bother with it because if I if I go to a multivariate t distribution and look at its kernel its kernel which is if you can see it's, it's this thing over here that's ex that's exactly the same as well not exactly the same but it's similar to the, the to the terms that we have okay so let me let me just rewrite this so it's it's similar to this x so in Wikipedia they've given you the distribution for a multivariate t distribution but with the in terms of x instead of y so let's let's just let's just rewrite it so it's it's as similar to that as possible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take beta out okay so if I take beta out essentially what it's going to become is beta to the alpha outside right and then inside I will end up having a 1 plus because I I factorized out beta this will end up saying um, what is it going to be so it, it will end up being y minus uh, y minus mu transpose times y minus mu but over here I will end up having a 2 beta sigma squared okay and this of course to the power of minus alpha um, this thing now is is essentially going to be a t distribution with so if you look at over here the this term over here was simply a diagonal term okay so we, we're not going to care about that but this thing over here the alpha was my new plus p on 2 okay so let me just say that alpha is equal to my new plus p on 2 oh sorry it was all on 2 new plus p all on 2 okay and this thing over here um, 2b sigma squared to beta sigma squared you can treat as that being as your new uh, new parameter okay and the sigma you can treat that as being I okay so so there, there you go so I mean you can you can solve these two equations and get your new and P parameters but essentially um, your this is going to be a T distribution you don't care about you don't care about uh, the normalizing constant over here because what you really care about is the kernel so this kernel idea is really important in Bayesian uh, statistics or when you're integrating things out so because the thing is this thing over here will, will automatically form part of your normalizing constant because we're dealing with probabilities and it has to integrate out to one we will automatically get all these things that we need so that if we were to ever integrate this thing for y so y is an all real I guess rn if I was to ever integrate this thing out I will always end up with uh, a t distribution okay a proper t distribution so again we don't care about the, uh, the normalizing constants because all we care about is looking at the kernel and trying to get as similar to this as possible okay in fact not uh, as much as possible you just have to do that uh, so anyway that's that's all I have for uh, for t, uh, normal distributions with gamma priors so what you will end up with is a t distribution so doing the univariate case should be much more simpler than this and if you have any questions regarding that please let me know and I will answer that uh, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe